of the same mathematical model. The only thing that has changed is the coloring. Every cloud is different, we can't predict where lightning will strike, but we can predict how jagged it will be. We can't tell whether it will rain tomorrow, but we can foresee how rapidly, on the average, the changes in the weather will occur. Fractal geometry is the science of the structure, inherent even in the unpredictable, in turbulence, in chaos. The behavior of mathematical weather models is as unpredictable as the weather itself. This amazing discovery, which we owe to Ed Lawrence, has created a stir in the scientific world and is now known as the butterfly effect. Well, this really came from a paper that I gave called Can the Flap of a Butterfly's Wings in Brazil Stir Up a Tornado in Texas? Actually, the title was, I'd been away at beforehand and the title was one that someone had had given to me I I had I probably would have picked a seagull instead of a butterfly eye for it but it works the same way and I pointed out at the beginning of the talk that this wasn't really supposed to be a facetious question and that if it were true then certainly if, if a butterfly's wings could stir up a tornado then a butterfly could be equally effective in preventing a tornado that otherwise would have happened and so could the activity of all the other butterflies in the world and every other creature, particularly larger creatures, including human beings. So the real question was, can very small influences lead in due time to very big changes? But it's apparently because of the title of this paper that this has become known as the butterfly effect. Lawrence was able to trace this unpredictability back to an even more important mathematical discovery. By its mere existence, the Lawrence attractor contradicts established ideas as to the long-term behavior of dynamic systems. But how did Lawrence discover the Lawrence attractor? Well, this all started back around 1956 when there were some some methods of forecasting had been proposed as being the best methods available and I didn't think they were I decided to cook up a small system of equations which would simulate the atmosphere solve them by computers which were now becoming available and to then treat the output of this as if it were real atmospheric observational data and see whether the proposed method applied to it would would work. I finally found a system of 12 equations which would do this and found that the proposed method didn't work too well when applied to it. But in the course of doing this I wanted to make some examine some of the solutions in more detail. I had a small computer in my office then so I typed in some of the intermediate conditions which the computer had printed out as new initial conditions to start another computation and then went out for a while. When I came back I found that the solution was not the same as the one I had before. The computer was behaving differently. I suspected computer trouble at first but I soon found that the reason was that the numbers I had typed in were not the same as the original ones. These were rounded off numbers and the small difference between something rounded off to retained to six decimal places and rounded off to three had amplified in the course of two months of simulated weather until the difference was entirely, uh, the difference was as big as the signal itself. And to me this implied that, that if the real atmosphere behaved in this method then we simply couldn't make forecasts two months uh, had these small errors in observation would amplify until they became large. Why did this realization shake the established world view? For the sake of simplicity, let's assume we have precise knowledge of the laws of nature that determine the behavior of a physical system. As for this pendulum, the laws of nature can be written in terms of mathematical formulae. If we have precise knowledge of the system state at some initial moment, then we can predict the development for any time in the future. Basically, this is also true for the particular model which Lawrence investigated for weather forecasting. 
If we have approximate knowledge of the temperature, humidity, barometric pressure and so on at some initial time, we should be able to calculate the development approximately for the future. That, or so scientists thought, was the rule. The Lawrence experiment throws this fundamental belief into question. We will turn the system back to an initial state. After only a minimal change in the initial values, through rounding off, as in Lawrence's case, or by the flap of a butterfly's wings, the model develops in such a fundamentally different way that any forecast would prove worthless. For small disturbances or errors in measurement are unavoidable. Scientists were intoxicated by the discovery that chaos is not an exception, but a typical manifestation of nature. This fact had been overlooked in past centuries because of the lack of an adequate language. Science stood speechless before a phenomenon present even in quite simple systems.